So I'm rolling here. Do you want to tell me about this design? Yeah, so basically this is a, a single pivot design, so it's a fairly simple um, design in that there's only one pivot here. Uh -huh. Swing arm pivots about that point. The complex part about this is the chain routing and the linkage here. The chain routing reduces the moment arm that the chain would have on the suspension. So having a, a small idler here means that you can pedal without exerting any force around the swing arm. The idler down here keeps the derailleur independent from the suspension. So as you compress it, the derailleur doesn't slack at all. So it reduces chain slack. The linkage on this side is a triangular rocker like uh, formula cars and uh, what it does is it enables you to have a high leverage ratio initially but as you bottom out these three points well these three points line up and reduces your leverage ratio so it starts out with a three to one leverage ratio on the shock and it ends when the shock's bottomed out at a two to one leverage ratio so it re reduces the chance of bottom out. The reason for raising the pivot up here that you can see if you projected a line through the pivot and the axle it would be almost perpendicular to the fork. Once you get a little sag on it, it's perpendicular. What that does is create a rearward, rearward travel with the rear parallel with the front. So when you hit a bump in the front the fork reacts by absorbing some lateral movement and vertical movement, and the rear does the same thing. So when you hit a bump in the front, it feels the same in the rear. It doesn't buck you over your bike. And uh, explain the brakes. The brake? Oh yeah, the brake isolates the braking from the suspension as well. Um, you can see that it's a parallelogram here, created by three, these four pivot points. So. When you're riding and you hit the brake, it doesn't want to suck the suspension up. Or after you've hit a bump and you hit a brake, if it's compressed up and you have your brake on, it's going to want to slow down the rebound because the forces go into the swing arm and through the suspension if you didn't have a floating rear brake. When you have the floating rear brake, the forces from the brake go directly to the frame, bypassing the suspension. And that's uh, for traction control. Pretty, and pretty cool. That's about it. Forty-one thirty chromoly tubing. Um, Forty-four and a half pounds. Do you want to take take it for a spin and show us how it performs here? Yeah. See the, the mo motion. And it goes over obstacles while pedaling fairly easily. Down, obstacles. Very easy. 